As you already know from my channel, Norse mythology is famous for its unique gods, but at the same time it doesn't lack when it comes to incredible and weird creatures. So let's meet the most famous creatures of Norse folklore. Audumbla Audumbla is a mythical cow who fed the first Jotun Ymir her milk. Her name means hornless, milk-rich cow. She appears in only one narrative in the prose Adar. She is most famous for licking the salt stone that revealed Buri, grandfather of the gods. Her connections with Ymir and Buri place her at the beginning of creation, helping to bring into being the first creatures of Norse mythology. Draugr Draugr is another one of Norse mythology creatures that belongs to the group of the undead of Norse mythology. Some stories describe them as bloodthirsty creatures, like modern vampires, although they were more like zombies. The Draugr creatures had tremendous strength, and they could increase their size as they deemed necessary. Their stench of rotten flesh was unimaginable, and their decaying bodies were a horrific thing to behold. Draugr creatures lived within their graves, so they could defend various treasures that they were buried with. Many people claim that Draugrs were known to go to populated areas to kill the living and eat their flesh, and torturing those that wronged them during the time that they were alive. These creatures were known for killing people with their sheer strength, eating their living flesh, or even killing people indirectly by driving them insane. They were able to enter the dreams of the living so that they could torture them. They would always leave a gift so the tormented person would know that the encounter was real. Killing the Draugr was possible by dismembering its body or by putting its body ablaze. If Draugr's body decayed too much, they would suffer a second death and die as well. The common belief was that a person would most likely become a Draugr after death if they were evil, greedy or unpopular during their lifetime. Dwarves These human-like creatures were known to both Norse and Germanic mythology. They are small, twisted creatures, and it's believed they have originated as maggots from the corpse of one of the first giants, Ymir. The dwarves were gifted with reason by the mighty gods of Asgard. Svartalfheim was thought to be a warren of forges and mines. It's an underground place in which the dwarves lived. Dwarves are known as the Norse mythology creatures that crafted some of the most excellent weapons and jewellery. It's said that dwarves were the ones who crafted the Mjolnir, the mighty hammer of Thor, and Gungnir, the spear of Odin. Some myths say that if dwarves were exposed to the sunlight, they would petrify and literally turn to stone. Elves Elves in Norse mythology are split into two different types. The Dokulfa, Dark Elves, and the Jolsulfa, Light Elves. Light Elves are tall, slender beings who are said to be fairer than the sun. They would rarely interact with humans except to cure or cause sicknesses for unknown reasons. The Light Elves are said to live in the realm of Alfheimer, meaning elf home, under the rule of the god Freya. Dark Elves live underground and have a dark complexion, said to be blacker than pitch. They are said to act quite differently from the Light Elves. Some scholars believe that the Dokulfa may simply be another name for dwarves. Not much else is known about their behaviours and world. They are referenced many times in both the Poetic Edda and the Prose Edda, but often in passing. Fenrir Fenrir is one of the most famous wolves in history, the offspring of Angraboda, the giantess, and the Norse god Loki. His siblings are the World Serpent, Jorgbanda, and the goddess Hel. All three of them were prophesied to help bring the end of the world, Ragnarok. Fenrir was raised by the gods of Asgard. They knew that Fenrir would kill Odin during Ragnarok, so to prevent that from happening, they had him chained with special bindings. Eventually, Fenrir was able to free himself of his bindings and would go on to fulfil his destiny. Fenrir wasn't viewed as an evil creature, but as an inevitable part of the natural order of life. Fenrir serves as the basis of many later literary wolves. Fossigrimmon The Fossigrim, also known simply as the Grim, is a water spirit and creature. He plays the fiddle with an incredible talent, mimicking the sounds of the forest, wind and water. He can be induced to teach the skill. He usually requires an offering, perhaps a white goat thrown with its head turned away into a waterfall that flows northwards, or smoked mutton stolen from the neighbour's storehouse four Thursdays in a row. If there is not enough meat on the bone, the Grim will only teach the supplicant how to tune the fiddle. If the offering is deemed sufficient, he will take the pupil's right hand and draw them along the strings until they bleed. Filia and Haminya The Filia are spirit animals that would show up after the birth of a child. Typically, animals would be the ones to eat the afterbirth. They were said to reflect the character of the person being born. A tame person may have an ox or goat as their filia, 
whereas a wild person may have a wolf, bear, eagle or serpent. Philia can also refer to shape-shifting between animals, as many mythological beings in Norse legends can do. A Herminia is a kind of female guardian spirit with a similar connection to a person as their Philia. She decides a person's luck and happiness. When a person died, it was thought that their Herminia passed down to their most beloved family member, increasing their fortune over time. Herminia can also appear as animals, but differ from their Philia in their different roles throughout one's life. Garm the Hellhound. Garm is a mountain-sized beast who also guards the gates of hell. The hound can be summoned using a spell for the Darkhold. He is a fierce, bloodthirsty hound who won't stop until he tracks down his prey. Little is known about the beast from folklore, but at the same time he has one of the most important roles in mythology at some point. He is the one who kills one of the most powerful gods of Norse pantheon, the god of war, Tyr. Jerry and Freki in Norse mythology, Jerry and Freki are both mistranslated from Old Norse into meaning the ravenous or greedy one. While Jerry means spear and Freki possibly means greedy, they are the two wolves which are said to accompany the god Odin. Hydran Hydran is a mythological goat described both in the Poetic Edda and Prose Edda. She eats the buds off the tree Leirutha, producing so much mead that she fills a huge cauldron every day to provide her magical drink for all the warriors of Valhalla. She is said to produce the clearest mead and that there's an everlasting amount. Her diet of buds is carefully controlled to keep this relationship going and provide for the warriors at the hall. Once in the Poetic Edda, the term Hydran is used as an insult to Freya. Hugin and Munin Hugin and Munin were Odin's ravens. Hugin was known as Thought and Munin was known as Memory. Every morning, Odin would send the ravens out to fly around the Nine Worlds. When they returned, they would perch upon Hildskalf and let Odin in on everything they had seen. They were considered to be the helping spirits and Odin was sometimes referred to as the Raven God. The connection between Odin and the ravens is likely to do with death in battle. When someone was killed during a fight, they were considered to be a gift to the ravens. The dead men were also considered gifts to Odin as their spirits would be picked up by the Valkyries and taken to Valhalla. Ravens were also identified with mysticism. With Odin being both a shaman and sorcerer, this makes sense. The significance Hugin and Munin would have in myths is being the eyes and ears of Odin. While Odin could see everything from Hildscaf, it would always help to have more than just himself watching the comings and goings of those who inhabited the Nine Worlds. Huldra The Huldra or Talimaya in Swedish, is a troll-like female known for living in the woods. Although the Huldra often has a beautiful appearance, she's also wild and has the tail of a cow, which she will often hide behind her back when meeting with a human. The tail of the Huldra has a connection to the story of Adam and Eve. When Eve and Adam had many children, she was giving them all a bath when God came to visit. Eve hid the children that were still dirty and lied to God about their whereabouts. God said that the hidden children should remain hidden, and they became the Underjordisk, lost souls living under the earth. Although Huldra was one of those hidden children, she managed to stay above the ground and often appears as a young and flirtatious girl. Jormungandr For humans at least, there are few creatures more important than Jormungandr. Also known as the Midgard Serpent, he encircles the earth keeping everything in place. Jormungandr is the child of Loki and the Jotun Agraboda, along with Fenrir and Hel and was tossed into the ocean by Odin. The serpent grew so large that he was able to surround Midgard and grasp his own tail. Jormungandr's archenemy is Thor, the god of thunder. Ragnarok, the end of days, begins when Jormungandr releases his tail and comes out of the ocean to poison the sky. He will be slain by Thor, who then drops dead from being poisoned by his venom. Jotna The Jotna were considered to be the equivalent of giants in Norse mythology but it is many times a misconception due to the modern interpretations, as the Jotna are a race in itself. The giant Emir was the first being to exist at the time of creation, and hence the Jotna are considered to be the first race that came into existence. The Norse god Odin is considered to be half Jotun, and so is the god Thor, who is considered around three quarters Jotun. Odin and his two brothers slew Emir the Jotun, and the Nordic cosmos was formed. Thus began the war between the Jotun and the gods. The Jotna, who disagreed with the gods, lived in Jotunheimen, a vast, unforgiving landscape. They are considered to be similar to frost giants. The Jotna are believed to be chaotic, while the gods of Norse mythology represent order. 
The Battle of Ragnarok is the struggle between the Jotnar and the gods of Asgard. This would result in the destruction of the current realm, after which it will be reborn anew. So, the Jotnar are one of the pillars of the universe where they represent one side of the coin, and one day will bring about a truly chaotic change in the balance of things. Kraken the Kraken was a mythical sea creature that haunted the sea between Iceland and Norway, and Iceland and Greenland. Although it is considered a very popular creature in modern times, the actual origin of the lore is from Scandinavia. It was first mentioned in the 13th century by the Norse hero Orva Orda, who described it to be a fearsome creature capable of sinking ships and drowning men. The Kraken was a beast that had no equal in the vast seas of the ancient Norsemen, and a creature that was feared by every soul inhabiting the ocean. It was described as being as large as an island, with fearsome tentacles and infinite razor-sharp beaks that were also part of its tentacles. The creature was a terror to behold, and the ancient seafarers were terrified of Kraken's appearance on their journeys. Seafarers were apprehensive of the wake of destruction it might leave once it decided to depart into the depths of the ocean. Today, the Kraken is proved to be a real existence in the form of the giant and the colossal squids. Mare. One of the most fearful Norse mythology creatures is the Mare. This monster was able to give people bad dreams and it sat on them during their sleep. It was a common belief that the Mare was a soul of the living that left the body of a person as demons would so it could torture the innocent at night. Another belief is that these were witches and that their souls could take animal form. It was a common belief that the soul could wander off at night. Even the Allfather Odin's soul wandered and it wondered very frequently that Odin was afraid one time that his soul may not find its way back to his body. People believe that if the mare touches any living creature like trees, cattle or even people, the touch will cause tree roots or even human hair to become entangled. Neathogger It is said that many creatures live among Yggdrasil's roots and branches. One of these mythical beings is Neathogger, a dragon in Norse mythology that lives at the bottom of the world tree. The dragon chews on the dead bodies of those who have broken oaths and are guilty of murder or adultery. Norns Norns were the fates of Norse mythology. They consisted of fate, being and necessity. They lived by the well of Erd and were thought to shape the life of each being from its first day until its last. The Norns were considered to be amongst the most powerful entities within the Nine Worlds, which could make them considerably dangerous, as they could both create and control fate. The Norns appear in the myth, The Lay of Grimnir. Odin tells the giant Gerod that the Norns will only offer him death. They are also briefly mentioned in Loki's children and the binding of Fenrir, as being prophetic and foreseeing the future outcome between Fenrir and Odin. Ratatoska Ratatoskas were mischievous squirrels that played amongst the branches of Yggdrasil. Sometimes they were the messengers to the gods and would carry messages throughout Yggdrasil. They generally appear as red squirrels and can be known to have rather long ears. Much like the trickster Loki, Ratatoskas feed off of trouble. They like stirring things up in relationships and are quite entertained by the general outcomes. In myths, Ratatoskas can sometimes be represented as a magical drill that Odin would use to drill a hole in a mountain and climb in as a serpent. It was there that he would drink mead filled with wisdom. There is also a possible connection between a Ratatoska and the god Heimdall, as both were known for their keen eyesight and hearing. Sleipnir There are many stories of amazing horses in ancient myth and legend. It seems that our ancestors loved their horses as much as we like our cars. The Vikings were no exception, and Norse mythology contains several stories about exceptional horses. The most famous Norse steed, however, was Odin's eight-legged horse Sleipnir, who was unmatched in strength and speed. It is said that it had eight legs, so it could have one leg in each of the Norse worlds. Loki is actually the mother of Sleipnir. Loki shapeshifted into a mare and was impregnated by the stallion of a giant. Svadilfari Svadilfari is related to the eight-legged horse Sleipnir. Literally, it was a stallion owned by a giant from Norse mythology. This stallion fathered the eight-legged horse Sleipnir with Loki, who shapeshifted at that moment into a mare. Tangrisnir and Tangnostria Tangrisnir and Tangnostria are the goats that pulled Thor's chariot. Disturbingly, Thor cooks the goats and eats their flesh before resurrecting them again with his hammer. In this way, he has a daily meal available through his goats. In the Poetic Adar, 
Thor is seen finding the goats with splendid horns and taking them for himself. He is then later called Lord of Goats. At the end of one story, when Loki and Thor stop by a peasant's house, they skin and cook the goats for the whole family. The peasant's son eats the marrow of the bone, which affects the resurrection of the goat, who then has a slight limp. The boy is taken on as one of Thor's servants. Trolls The trolls are common creatures that are found in every part of the world, but in Norse mythology it is a creature that is found dwelling in mountains, caves or the depths of the forests. They are considered to be creatures best left alone, as they are believed to be very powerful physically but extremely dim-witted at the same time. They are beings who live in isolation, as they are considered quite ugly and a bane to society. There are stories of trolls being the toll keepers for bridges, and a price had to be paid to pass. If one could not pay the price, it is said that the troll would devour them. The trolls were believed to be stupid and dumb, but were still a frightening foe to run into for any unlucky soul. Valkyries Valkyries are probably the most famous North mythology creatures. They are Odin's female spirits that were noble and elegant maidens, whose purpose is to bring to Valhalla all the brave Viking warriors that lost their lives in battle. Valhalla is known as Odin's heavenly home for fallen warriors as they wait for Ragnarok. The word Valkyries roughly translates as the choosers of the fallen. Valkyries didn't only work for Odin, but they were the ones able to decide who will live and who will die in battle. It is believed that they used their evil magic to make sure the outcome would go in their favour. These were the creatures from Norse mythology. If you have any thoughts or if you think I've missed any creature, please share it in the comments below. Also, if you really liked this video, you can support the channel through the super thanks button. Thank you for watching. Yours truly, Mythos the Historian.